Hey, what's up guys? If you're interested in creating and sharing your own content on the world's largest video platform, YouTube, then this video is for you. In the following steps, I'll take you through the entire creative process of setting up and launching your YouTube channel, including everything from choosing a name to creating your own channel art, uploading your first video and promoting your own content. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to start building an engaged audience and share your content with the world. So without further ado, Let's dive in. So the first step in this process is going to be the brainstorming process. This comes before everything, before you have your channel name, before you even have anything set in motion, we're going to do some brainstorming. What I need you to do for this step is ask yourself these simple questions. What is your content going to be about? What style of content are you going to choose to deliver it in? Long form, short form, both? What platforms are you going to post your content on aside from YouTube? Do you have enough ideas and information to produce lots and lots of content? This is an important one because a lot of people start and then realize well, now I ran out of content and I'm not sure what to do and their channel becomes stagnant. So make sure that you have lots and lots of ideas or information on what you want to create content on. Next question would be, how much time are you willing to invest in this journey? It takes a lot of time and effort to start a channel and build a following and keep at it. Uh, it's a lot harder than most people think and it does take quite a lot of time. And the last question I want you guys to ask yourselves is how much money are you willing to invest in equipment to record your content and edit and all that stuff, or do you already have it? There's a lot of free options out there, so this step isn't that important, and it really depends on the type of content that you wanna create. Once you guys have answered all of these questions, it's time to move on to step two. Step two in the creative process would be branding. Now, before we dive in and start creating your channel, let's think up some basic branding. Let's start with a name. Naming your channel is completely up to you, the creator. It can be anything that you want it to be. You want it to be an entity, like mine is Hammerdance, which was like my gamer tag for a very long time. It can be your, your regular name, it can be a business or organization type name. Whatever you want it to be, let's think of a name. Whatever you settle on though, think for quite a while on this because it's not good practice to constantly be changing your name, especially in the beginning. You wanna build a brand and you want it to be strong. You want people to remember that name and know when they see a video posted by you that this is your content. So think pretty long on this and come up with a name that suits your content and suits you and you're happy with and go with it. Now, once you've settled on a name, it's time to start thinking about what you want your brand to look like, right? Every creator has a specific brand style or look. My color schemes are usually blue and white. Um, that's my Hammerdance logo, but I also use this kind of like vapor wavy type color scheme for everything where I love blues and purples and pinks and whites together. So let's think of that. Let's think of like a color scheme. What represents your content or your channel. Once you've settled on that and you have a basic idea of what you want your brand to look like, it's time to actually get some artwork. Now, I'm not saying to go out and spend tons of money on crazy graphics and animations and things like that. You can if you want to, but it's absolutely not necessary when you're just starting your channel. There's a lot of cheap options out there. You can go on Fiverr and get some graphics done, like basically a logo and maybe a YouTube banner. It's some very simple channel art, but just make sure it looks professional. Make sure you're researching and looking at other creators in your category category and getting some inspiration from them. There's nothing wrong with looking at people's channels that you watch and saying, wow, I really like that. And, and you know, go through, skim through it, find things that you like and gain your inspiration from that. And then tell the artist on Fiverr or create it yourself. I'm not sure, you know, some people know how to use Photoshop and Illustrator. For me, I do mostly all my own graphics because I've been using uh, the entire Adobe suite for a very long time. So I know how to do some basic graphic design, but yeah, Go ahead and, and find some inspiration from creators that you watch and, you know, pick and pull some pieces from theirs. Make sure though that you come up with your own unique style and branding that fits you. Don't, you know, don't go steal someone else's designs because that's not good practice either. Get some inspiration, figure out what works for you and go from there. So now we've done the brainstorming, we've come up with a channel name, we've figured out what you want your brand to look like and now it's time to create your accounts. I suggest creating your, a specific Gmail account for the channel you wanna start and any other accounts that you might want. If you're just posting on YouTube, all you need is that Gmail account. Uh, but if let's say you wanna start posting on YouTube and have your content remixed down to some you know, shorts for YouTube shorts and TikToks, create your TikTok account, Facebook, wherever you're gonna post your content, get all these accounts created in this step. So we've settled on branding for your channel. We know what the name is gonna be, we know what type of content you wanna create, and we know what your brand is going to look like to your viewers. The next step in this process is going to be the planning step. 
This is usually the hardest step for new creators simply because this is where everything becomes real. Anyone can think about creating a channel, come up with a name and get some artwork, but when it comes to sitting down and planning out your videos, people get stuck. My advice to you is to plan out your first eight to 10 videos. I'm not saying to go and write eight to 10 full video scripts. I'm saying just plan out your first eight to 10 videos, meaning come up with the ideas for them, right? Make sure that it's something that people want to see. Make sure it's something that you have, you know, a good amount of information to talk about or whatever it is. It depends completely on your content, but just get basic rough ideas of your first eight to 10 videos and write them down, either using Google Docs or a pen and paper, whatever you want to use. After you've planned out your first eight to 10 videos very roughly, I think it's time that we start writing your first video. Now, a lot of creators do this in different ways, right? Some creators write full scripts and read a script for their videos. It's a little harder when you're on a face cam, um, you know, to re read a script because you wanna be looking at the camera. You don't wanna be reading a script while you're talking, but you can do this any way that you want. Find out what works for you. I do a mixture of everything. I write outlines for some videos. I write full scripts for some videos. It depends how much my face is going to be visible in the video. So write out your first video, whether it be an outline or a script or even just some bullet points that you can glance at and keep talking to. That's what I'm doing right now for this video. Write it out, get a full video written. Some people just completely wing it and talk off the top of their head, which I do for some videos as well, but it depends on the content that I'm creating. It depends on the type of video. And for you, someone who's just starting out, I highly suggest at least having a rough outline written for a full video that you can glance at because in the beginning, you're going to be a little bit camera shy. So it's easier if you have some guidance and structure to your video. It's very easy to go off topic and start rambling and then forget about things that you wanted to mention. So I would suggest getting a rough outline done for your first video. So now that you've answered all the questions in step one, settled on your branding, created your channel and planned out your first eight to 10 videos with a full outline or script written for at least one of them, it's time to move on to step four. Step four is recording, editing and creating your thumbnail. A lot of creators who are just starting out have a very hard time with this step, but I assure you once you do this one time, once you create this first video, it'll start to flow naturally and become a lot easier for you. And that's because once you've recorded that first video, you've broken the invisible barrier. And the invisible barrier is what a lot of creators face. Uh, when you're just starting out, it's a pretty daunting task to actually start recording and editing and creating thumbnails and all that stuff. It's very easy to sit back and say, well, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to start a YouTube channel. Here are all my ideas. Here's my name. Here's my logo. And then when it comes time to actually recording, editing, creating thumbnails, this is where people get stuck and usually stop. And they, so most of the time people don't even start. So I'm saying, make sure you just start. Get over that hump, just start creating your videos and it becomes easier and easier as time goes on. Your first video may be great or it could be a complete train wreck, but the important thing here is that you broke that barrier, the invisible barrier as we called it before. It's very important to get past that because once you get past that step, you are now in the process of moving. You're starting it, you're going forward. You can only go up from here. You didn't have a channel before, and now you have a channel. So we're moving in the right direction. Another thing that happens after you've recorded that first video is you gain some confidence and you can see that in your future videos. Think of it like a skill in a video game that levels up every single time you create and publish a video. This never ends. You constantly get better and better and better. You get more charismatic in front of the camera. It's constantly leveling up and your videos are going to get better and better as time goes on. I know for myself, if I look back at my first video that I created for this channel, I was very very awkward. You could tell I was super weird in front of the camera. I, I felt awkward. I didn't really know what I was trying to say. I had a full script written, but once the camera was on and recording me, I lost it. You know, I, I got very nervous. It just felt weird to me in the beginning, but now 120 videos later, I could talk to the camera. No problem. What helped me is I started to think of it as I wasn't talking to a camera. I was talking to a group of people and it was a group of people that all had the same thoughts as me. They all, you know, my channel is about being a creator, streaming, software. It was a bunch of things that I had in my brain. I knew this information and I wanted to relay it to people and do it in a fun way that I found enjoyable. So I started to think of it as I was just talking to people. I'm talking to a group of people. I'm not talking to a camera. Even the biggest creators get better and better with every video. Go look at your favorite creators. Go back to one, two, three years on their channel and you'll see the improvement. You constantly are getting better and better 
the more videos you put out. Now that you've recorded your first video, it's time to edit. I suggest using something like Adobe Rush or any free video editor that you can find in the beginning stages of your channel, simply because I don't think you should dump a bunch of money into this because you may do this and figure out, you know what, this isn't for me. I don't really like it. I don't want to do it. Not usually the case with most people, but there's tons of options out there when you want to get into paid options. I use Adobe Premiere for all my editing, but I've been using it for quite a long time and it's a little bit complex to use if you're just starting out. Adobe Rush was made for creators, uh, so it's a lot simpler um, and very easy to use. Editing your first video though can be a little tricky if you've never used video editing software, so I suggest going on YouTube and searching whatever software you're using, search up some tutorials and follow them along. You'll gain some basic knowledge and it will come like that. It's very easy, um, especially in the beginning. Really all you're gonna be doing when editing your first video is trimming out the dead space. And what dead space is, is the silent parts of your video where you stop talking or where you're looking at your script or you don't want it to be silent pretty much ever. Silence equals bad. You want it to be engaging the entire way through. You want to be talking. You want to be relaying information. People are spending their time to watch your video. They don't want to see you sitting there in silence. If you're trying to add some background music, add some background music in there. Make sure it's not too loud. When I first started, I was adding background music that was completely overpowering my voice. So it took me quite a while to get those levels right to make it background music and not music that was just blasting over my voice. But there's tons of content on YouTube that you guys can watch. It's all free and you will figure out how to edit your first video. Anyone can do it. But after you've finished editing your video, make sure to watch it back to yourself a few times. You'll have made mistakes. I still make mistakes and I've been doing this for years. Watch it back a few times, fix any mistakes that are in there, make sure that it's solid, make sure that it has all the information packed in there that you wanted to deliver to your audience, and then it's time to export. Exporting is fairly simple, but if you wanna look up the best like export settings for whatever software you're using, there's also tons of content on that on YouTube as well. I suggest looking it up just to make sure your video comes out the way that you want it to be. So you've recorded and edited your video. Now it's time to create your thumbnail. Creating an excellent thumbnail is one of the most crucial parts to uploading your videos on YouTube. Your thumbnail and title are like the two key elements, I think, that most people don't stress enough how important these are. Your thumbnail and your title are what gain your viewers' attention and get them to click on your video. It's extremely important to have a really engaging title and a really engaging thumbnail that, well, you know, when someone is scrolling through the thousands and thousands of videos in your category, they're like, wow, this one looks great. I wanna watch this video. For creating thumbnails though, I suggest using something like GIMP, which is free software. Uh, if you do have Adobe Photoshop, that's what I use, um, but there are lots of free options out there when it comes to creating thumbnails. It doesn't even need to be anything crazy. It just needs to look professional, concise, and to the point. You wanna make sure though that you don't don't repeat the title of your video in your thumbnail. Think of your thumbnail as like a news headline. You want to let the viewers know, hey, this is what you're going to get if you click on this video. You don't want to repeat the title and make it like you're telling your entire description of the video in the thumbnail. It just needs to be catchy, appealing to the eye, and deliver a clear message on what this video is about in a way that makes people say, wow, I really want to watch this video. Just remember, the main goal of your thumbnail is to grab your viewers' attention as they're scrolling through. So anything you can throw in there to make people stop and say, whoa, I need to watch this, put it in. So now that you've recorded, edited, and created your thumbnail, it's time to move on to uploading. This is where it pays off to do some research on keywords and proper search engine optimization or SEO, which I'm sure you've seen, to learn how to title and write video descriptions and tags the right way. Titling your videos with good keywords and search terms is crucial to helping the algorithm feed your content to viewers. Spend a lot of time researching before you actually come up with a title for your video and write your description and tags. One way that you can figure out good titles or search terms for your video is to head on over to YouTube yourself, right? And start typing in the search bar. Think about the video that you're creating. Let's think about this video, how to start a YouTube channel. So if I go to YouTube and I type, it'll auto-populate with the most commonly searched phrases. And one of those phrases is how to start a YouTube channel. So you know that a lot of people are searching that phrase. So that is a great title. You wanna keep that in the title, put it in the description, use it in the tags, use that to your advantage. Go on YouTube and search yourself. If you were searching for the video that you're creating, what would you write in that search bar to find it? 
and that's usually a good title. Now, once you have your title, description, and tags all set to go, it's time to publish your video. Every channel has a different hot window. And what a hot window is, is basically the times that your audience is most active on the platform. Now, just starting out, you're not gonna really have the analytics on your channel to see like, oh, my viewers are watching all my content between 12 and four, Monday through Friday, and then it kind of tapers off after 4 p.m and tapers off on the weekends. You won't have that information available to you right off the bat, but a good rule of thumb is when you're just starting, post on like Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays around 12 or 1 p.m. That should be pretty optimal for you guys to gain some traction. And then once you have 10 to 20 videos on your channel, you can go into your YouTube studio and check your analytics and find that hot window. It gives you like a heat map that can show you when your audience is most active on the platform. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, Congrats, you're on your way to starting a successful YouTube channel. You just have to find your rhythm. There's no specific formula that works better or worse. It really comes down to the creator themselves. You can upload once a week, once a month, twice a week, whatever works for you. But I do suggest setting yourself some realistic and attainable goals in the beginning. Goals are super important because it'll give you a sense of accomplishment when you reach that goal. And when I say attainable, let's say just starting out, I would give you a goal of posting one video every other week for the first four to five videos. This is pretty attainable because when you're first starting out, it's going to take you a lot longer to produce content than once you're already in your rhythm. I'm in my rhythm. I have my lights, my camera, everything is set up. I can basically write a video, hit one button, and I'm good to go. I'm recording. I got everything set up. I have templates set up on Adobe Premiere, on Photoshop that I use for my thumbnails. You'll gain your rhythm and you'll get faster and faster as you go. But when you're just starting out, I suggest doing one video every other week for the first four to five videos, find your rhythm, and then you can bump it up to once a week, twice a week, depends on the type of content you're creating. Just remember, you'll always get out of your channel what you put into it. If you're creating great content that's engaging, that people want to see, and, and you're delivering it in a way that keeps their attention, you will get rewarded for that. If you're just throwing videos together in a matter of 10 minutes and uploading it thinking you're gonna get views and you're not researching keywords and SEO and titling your videos correctly, you probably won't get many views. So make sure you put the time and effort into this. I hope this video helped anyone who wanted to get started with a YouTube channel and didn't even know where to begin. It's happened guys. I'm pretty sure this is it right here. YouTube has solved small creator growth on the platform. I'm going to go grab a coffee real quick and let's dive into it. So we have a bunch of things to talk about here, guys. YouTube has been working really hard and it's paying off because the changes that they're implementing to the platform for creators of all sizes, small, medium, large, whatever size creator you are, they have done something for you. Uh, and the first thing that I want to go over here is the changes to the channel pages homepage. Todd B, the product lead for YouTube's homepage, has been tweeting a lot lately and uh, it's all good stuff. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about, uh, I'm going to bring up my channel here to show you guys how cool this is. What they've done is they have separated long form videos, live stream content and shorts on YouTube channel homepages. And what I mean by that is this. Let's take a look at my channel right here. So I'm sure you guys can see, uh, I'm sharing my screen right here. What they've done is they've separated long form videos, which you can see right here, shorts and live stream content. Each of these types of content now have their own page. This is huge uh, because it separates all the content. So what a lot of people have been doing for the past year um, is they have their normal channel, like let's say I have my channel here, um, and then they've been creating a second YouTube channel to do shorts because they were unsure whether shorts would hurt their channel's performance because the way it was before is that you would upload your regular videos, uh, you'd do a live stream, that live stream is now dropped into the mix of your long form videos. Uh, same with shorts, you would have your long form videos and then you would upload your shorts and they'd be kind of in the mix. So when you would look at your uploads tab, it would look really weird. I mean, you'd have like regular, videos with nice thumbnails, long form content. Then you'd have like a weird live stream right here that was three hours long. And then you'd have all these like little shorts with no thumbnails. So people had to like create thumbnails for them even though it was completely pointless. What this has done um, is made it extremely useful to utilize all forms of content on one channel. So now if you are a small, medium or large creator, it doesn't really matter. What you should be doing is creating your long form content, 
creating shorts because shorts have crazy amounts of discoverability. And then you could also do your live streams on here as well. It's all separated uh, and it looks great. I, this change is a game changer in my opinion. This is huge and so many people are gonna benefit from this and you should start using it right now if you haven't. Start creating shorts, start doing live streams on YouTube, all of this alongside of your long form content. Another massive thing that Todd B has tweeted is that shorts are going to become monetized. This is awesome. This this means that shorts creators or even people who aren't shorts creators who want to get into creating shorts, this is now going to be another avenue for revenue. Uh, this is huge. Shorts being monetized on the platform is going to be massive. So make sure you guys start taking advantage of shorts. I cannot stress this enough. I made a short about this the other day saying, hey guys, if you haven't yet, you need to start creating shorts because this is going to blow up. I have a feeling that next year is going to be a very very big year for YouTube and a lot of small creators are going to start blowing up because of shorts. Alongside of that, the other day they announced that you can now edit shorts within the app directly adding music or anything you want, just like TikTok. Um, so that's a huge plus too. That's something that people um, were using their PCs to edit shorts for. They couldn't do it directly in the app. Now you can. Um, so make sure you get on that. It is a huge upgrade. And last guys, but certainly not least on on this long list of YouTube updates is that YouTube shorts are coming to your TV. That is amazing. Do you realize how many more people are going to be exposed to YouTube shorts? There has been a countless amount of times where I was sitting on the couch at nighttime, couldn't sleep, and I just wish that I could scroll through TikToks or shorts on my TV. Uh, instead of just holding my phone, maybe my phone was about to die, whatever it may be. The fact that YouTube shorts are going to be visible on your TV and you can scroll through with your TV remote is massive. This means that an entire new audience um, is going to be exposed to shorts. And shorts, by the way, have the highest amount of discoverability on the platform already, right? So now imagine taking that and then sending it to double, if not triple, quadruple the amount of people. Being able to sit on your couch at night and scroll through shorts or do whatever just to have fun, I mean, that is massive. So the point of this video really is I wanted to give you guys an update on all of the things that YouTube has been doing. They have been working really hard and I am pleased with all of these updates. Um, and you guys, my audience, you know, all of you follow me because you, you know, want stream advice, you want creator advice, you want tech advice. All of that kind of stuff and I feel like this is something that is so important and I need to make sure you guys understand it like this is a big big time uh, for all creators uh, like I said of all sizes if you're just starting now is a great time to start utilize shorts to boost the discoverability of your channel but make sure you create long-form content as well if that's your thing this is a great time to start this is a great time to get discovered this is a great time for YouTube in general. A lot of you guys are asking me for an updated OBS best recording settings video and that's what I'm going to bring to you guys today. I'm going to give you guys my exact settings, what I'm using right now to record this video and all the videos that I record on my channel. All right, guys, so let's dive in. First thing we're going to do is head on over to our settings within OBS. We're going to open that up. We're going to go through this tab by tab just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so first up here, we have the general tab inside the general tab. There's a couple things you can change. Nothing here is super important. However, you can select your theme. And you guys know that I'm a big fan of dark themes. Uh, I will never use the white themes. They burn my eyes out of my head. So I'm using the Yami theme. I love this new theme for OBS. It makes it feel a little bit more modern. It's nice and soft uh, on the eyes. I love it. But scrolling down, there's nothing else super important here. Uh, we could do some source alignment snapping here right now. If you enable this, uh, it'll help you to align your sources and images, things like that uh, within your recording or on your stream. Um, you can enable that and set the sensitivity to be really snappy or very, very lenient. So that's completely up to you. Um, but other than that, everything in this tab, we can leave as is here. Feel free guys, by the way, to pause this video at any point in time and copy my exact settings. Like I said, these are the settings that I'm using to record all the videos on my channel. Channel. Next tab over, we have the streaming tab. Uh, for this video's purposes, this is a recording video. Nothing in here is going to be important. We're not changing anything uh, as this has nothing to do 
with recording directly onto your computer. Output tab, this is where things get a little bit more important. So as you can see right here at the top, uh, we have it set to advanced. So go ahead and change yours to advanced. If it's on simple, switch it over. Um, and it's on the streaming tab by default, but what we're gonna do is head over to the recording tab. Now on the recording tab, these are the settings that I'm currently using, but there's something that I want you guys to do a little bit different. Uh, I can't change anything right now because I'm currently recording. It doesn't allow you to change the settings while you're recording. But what we're going to do here is you're going to set the type to standard. Under recording settings, uh, choose your recording path. I have mine going to a specific hard drive where I record all my raw footage. So you can just hit browse and then select where you want your recordings to go. This is where it gets important. Recording format. You guys are going to want to set this to MKV. And the reason being for that is that if you're recording an MP4 like I am right now, uh, let's say my computer were to blue screen or I would get a power outage or something like that what happens is the mp4 file will get corrupt uh, I mean with mp4 files it's very hard to recover that file so essentially I could record for an hour long um, and something happens and now I lost the entire recording because I was recording in mp4 so I would suggest to you guys recording in mkv and there's a way so that you can record in mkv and then when you hit stop recording it's going to remux it down into an mp4 anyways uh, but I'll get to that later on in the video so recording format make sure you guys are using mkv I'm only using mp4 because for me these videos are pretty short they're about 10 minutes in length um, and if I need to I can re-record them but I have never had an issue thus far uh, so set your recording format to mkv audio track selected is one and as for your encoder if you're using a 10 series nvidia gpu or higher i would suggest using the nvidia nvank h.264 encoder it allows your computer to have a lot better performance and it's really really nice quality encoding uh, let's say you're using an amd gpu or you want to use your cpu uh, i would suggest using x264 which will use your processor to do the encoding so nvidia nvank h.264 4 is hardware encoding. It's using my graphics card. I have a 3080 Ti in here, so there's no reason why I shouldn't use it. Uh, X264 is going to use software encoding. Uh, so if you have a decent processor, I would suggest using that. Rescale output, we're not going to have anything selected here. Custom muxer settings, nothing here. Automatic file splitting, nothing here. Coming down to the encoder settings, you're going to want to set your rate control to CQP, CQ level 14, Keyframe interval, two seconds preset. I have mine on slow, which is good quality, but this you can tune uh, exactly to your machine. I would test it out. If you're recording gaming footage, uh, play with that a little bit and make sure you're not dropping frames in your game. Get it to run smooth for your game and to have a nice quality video. So do some testing there. Tuning, have it set to high quality, multi-pass mode, two passes at quarter resolution. Uh, profile set to high, look ahead, unchecked, psycho visual tuning. Have that checked. GPU I have set to zero and max B frames set to two. Next tab over, we have audio. This is where you can select uh, if you have multiple audio tracks. I'm assuming most of you don't, uh, but I do have videos explaining this more in depth. So for audio, you can most likely just leave this as is and replay buffer. Uh, you can enable a replay buffer, but this is not really for recording. This is more for streaming. Uh, like if you wanted to go back 30 seconds and capture a clip, you can enable the replay buffer, hit a button, and then it will capture the last 30 seconds of your stream. Pretty useful feature. However, not useful in recording. Recording. Coming down to the audio tab, you can copy my settings at the top for general. Uh, we want it on 48 kilohertz. We want it on stereo. We don't want mono sound. And then under global audio devices, this is where you're going to select what devices you're using on your machine. For desktop audio, I have mine set to default. My mic auxiliary audio, I have it set to broadcast stream mix because I'm using a Go XLR. So this may be a little bit different for you guys. So all of my sound gets mixed down into the Go XLR and then broadcasted through that stream mix, which you can see right here. Now, if you're using a set of gaming headphones and a separate mic, or even a mic that's attached to your gaming headphones, what you're gonna wanna do is set your desktop audio to either default or your gaming headphones, and then under mic auxiliary audio, you're gonna wanna set that to your headset mic or you know your standalone mic, whatever you're using. So you'll have two there. Meters, decay rate, we want that on fast. Peak meter type, we want sample peak. Advanced monitoring device, uh, don't worry about any of this for purposes of recording. 
um, and then obviously you can set hotkeys right here under the video tab. So this is where people get a little bit mixed up. So for your base canvas resolution, this is the resolution that you are playing or, or you know, whatever you're doing on your computer, your base resolution is the resolution of your monitor. So if you're gaming in 4K, this base canvas resolution is gonna be a 4K resolution. I'm gaming in 1080p at 240 Hertz. So my base canvas resolution is 1920 by 1080. You can downscale your recordings or stream uh, by using this output scaled resolution section right here. So let's say you're gaming in 1080 or you're gaming in 4K, but you want your recording to be 1080p or 720, um, you would change this to what you want your recording to be. Base canvas resolution, always leave at what your monitor is, what you're gaming at. Output scaled resolution, this will be what it changes your recording to. So if you're gaming in 1080 and you want your recording to be done in 720, you would change this to 1280 by 720p under output scaled resolution. Downscale filter, we want this set to resolutions match, no downscaling required. And common FPS values, this will be the FPS. If you want to record in 30 FPS, 60, 48, 59, this is where you would select that right here. Next tab going down is hotkeys. So within OBS, you can, you know, assign hotkeys, essentially key binds, uh, for any function almost within OBS. So you can do that here. If you're not using a stream deck, I suggest getting one, uh, even the mini is great. Uh, but if you aren't, you can select hotkeys right here. If you have a keyboard with some macro keys and things like that, you can select hotkeys to have it start recording, stop recording, um, turn on different sources, switch scenes, things like that. So basically you can turn your keyboard into a stream deck if you don't have one with this right here. And if anyone here has messed with keybinds in gaming, it's the exact same idea. You would click in here, hit the key that you want to be the keybind, and then hit apply, and that key is now saved. Under accessibility, this is more for like colorblind mode and things like that not necessary unless you absolutely need it. And under the advanced tab. So right here under general process priority, you wanna set that to normal. So what that means is that your system is using a normal amount of resources for OBS's recording. I would not suggest going above normal or below normal unless you absolutely have to. Leave that set to normal and see how it goes. If you need to dedicate more resources to OBS to help your recording do better, you can do that by going above normal. I would never suggest going on to high because what that's gonna do is it's going to allocate most of the resources on your PC to OBS, right? So your PC is using all of its energy to power OBS and hit and record. And if you're playing a game, you're gonna drop a lot of frames. So I would keep this set on normal and not mess with that unless you absolutely have to. Under the video tab, we have direct 3D11, color format, NV12, color space, 709, color range set to full, DR white level, 300 nits, and HDR nominal peak level set to 1000. Going down here, nothing else here is extremely important except for this tab right here. Here, the recording tab. Remember earlier when I said you guys should record in MKV format so that in case something happens, if your PC shuts down, if you lose power, something like that happens. If you're recording in MKV, what happens is that recording will still get saved up to where your PC shut down or where the error occurred. And you would select right here, automatically remux to MP4. So when you're done recording, you hit stop recording and now OBS will change that MKV file to an MP4 file on its own great feature um, and I highly suggest you guys record an MKV and select this option right here to remux it down to an MP4, especially if you're doing longer form videos where, you know, having an error in the middle of your recording could really be pretty detrimental to your production. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something that I think is very useful uh, and that will help you all to grow your channels, um, especially outside of Twitch, which in turn helps you grow your audience on Twitch. Uh, and that's, there is a secret ingredient when it comes to creating thumbnails for your videos that get people to click on them. Now, I'm sure you've watched a million videos talking about how to create thumbnails, like if you're a beginner and, and things like that, and how to make clickable titles and descriptions and use keywords and, uh, you know, SEO, all those good things. But there's one thing that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to actually creating your thumbnails, right? This video is not gonna be about how to create a thumbnail. It's gonna be about what you should be creating as a thumbnail. So if you have the basic skills needed to create a thumbnail, this video is for you. Uh, if you don't have the basic skills needed to create a thumbnail, I have a video, uh, I'll link it right here up top, um, where I can help you guys learn how to create a thumbnail. But if you already have those skills, this video is gonna help you guys. I'm gonna give you a little bit of tips here to help you create more clickable thumbnails, which in turn gets you more views, more clicks, 
more traffic to your Twitch, more traffic to your YouTube, or whatever platform it is that you're making these videos on. Uh, and I think I'm gonna help you all out. So we need a sip of coffee before we jump into this. This cool Nuka-Cola Fallout 76 mug. I don't know if you guys could see that. That's pretty dope. Other side is a Nuka-Cola world. Hey, I love this mug. Anyway, when you're creating your thumbnails, right? Your main goal is to create something super clickable that, that stands out, that people see when they're scrolling down and they're like, oh man, I wanna click on this video. This guy looks like he knows what he's talking about or this girl knows what she's talking about. This thumbnail looks nice, it looks clean, it looks professional, uh, it's vibrant, lots of colors going on, easy to notice this. I'm clicking on it right now because obviously we wanna get that click-through rate way up there. Um, so the one thing that I wanna talk to you guys about um, that a lot of new people struggle with, and this is 100% true, I struggled with it for years, um, is giving away too much information in your thumbnail, right? You're allowed to let people know what the video is about, what they're going to learn from watching the video, but at the same time, you don't want to let them know exactly what they're going to learn from watching the video because then what's the point of watching the video? They could just scroll down, see your thumbnail and be like, all right, I got it. Didn't even need to watch. Uh, and that's no good for you or for them because they're not getting the full information and you're not getting that click and that view or the watch time, which is super important. So what we're going to talk about right now is hiding things in your thumbnail that make people want to click on it. And I'm going to show you guys some examples right now. Let me pull up my screen. Boom. Okay. So I pulled up three of my thumbnails that I've created over time uh, to use as examples. And, and I, I posted these videos and they did very well. Um, and I, you know, that's why this was a test to see how well this really worked it's before I let you guys know to do it. So for the first one here, this was how to boost your Twitch. I gave some tips on like how to, you know, make it so your viewers don't get spammed with ads when they come in. Simple things like that, that do help, you know, boost your growth because uh, one out of every three viewers that clicks on your Twitch and gets an ad leaves before the ad is even done and never gets to see your stream. But anyway, if you do want to go watch that video, I'll link it right here. But as you can see in this thumbnail, right? The, the main idea of the video is here, right? Boost your growth. I show a little graph that I made, 2021 all the way to 2023, a nice steady incline of growth on your Twitch account. And I say, I have a nice big Twitch logo right in the middle so people know that that's what this is for. And then I say, with these free tools, and I put a punch of a hammer, a saw, a screwdriver, Right, and then I made them silhouettes, blacked them out, made them glowing and put a big question mark over them. Right, now obviously people know you're not boosting your Twitch growth with a hammer or a saw or a screwdriver. You're just not, it's not happening. Everyone who is seeing this thumbnail knows that, right? But they are tools that you're gonna use to do this and hammers, saws and screwdrivers are tools. So I figured, you know what? We're gonna use real tools and I'm gonna black them out and put a question mark over them so people see this and they're like, wow, I wonder what the real tools are that allow you to do this. So they click the video. Uh, that is the basics of, of what I'm talking about here. You want to, I told you everything you're gonna learn from this video, right? I told you, this is how to boost your growth on Twitch with a Twitch logo right here and a nice growth scale right at the bottom, a little graph. And then with these free tools, blacked out in silhouettes, the tools aren't the same tools that you're gonna learn in the video, obviously, with a nice question mark over them. It makes people wonder, right? So you're scrolling down and you see this thumbnail and you're like, huh, I wonder what the tools are. Can I really grow my Twitch account with a hammer? No, you're not gonna grow your Twitch account with a hammer. Well, you'll grow your Twitch account with hammer, with me, not with a hammer, the tool. You get what I'm saying. I'm losing, I'm going off track here. But anyway, this is one example I want to show you guys of a good thumbnail where I kind of hid what I was going to tell you, but I did tell you what I was going to tell you. It's kind of tricky. It's like, it's almost like mind games, really. Um, and then another one I want to show you is the one for this exact video that you're watching right now, right? This is a picture of me like this with my hat on, holding up a thumbnail in one hand and holding up a ball of mystical energy in the other hand and if you look at this thumbnail i could even put i i toyed with the idea of putting like question marks behind it and stuff like that i just i like the way it looks it's cleaner like this um you're looking at this and you're like what what is hammer holding we have no idea what he's holding what is this secret right and the title of this video is going to be something like 
the secret ingredient to creating awesome thumbnails or very clickable thumbnails, something along those lines. I haven't posted the video yet, obviously, because I'm filming it right now, but you get the idea. It's I'm, I'm telling you what you're going to learn, but making it so that you want to click on the video to actually learn the full amount of information. It's not clickbait. Right? It's not like I'm saying like click here to win $5,000 and then you come in here and I'm like hey guys we're playing League of Legends, uh, World of Warcraft, uh, just hang out for 46 hours and you might have a chance of winning $2. Like it's not clickbait. I'm giving you the information that I'm telling you I'm going to give you. It's just you have to make it more enticing for people to want to click on your videos and actually watch them. That's the, that's the key here is you need to get people interested in watching your content. Uh, they need, there needs to be some kind of value, right? If you did this and I guarantee if you made one video that was clickbait like this, you'd probably get some views, but guess what? None of those people are going to come back. They're not going to return to watching your videos. They're not going to subscribe. They won't watch the video very long. Uh, it won't be good. Clickbait is not good. You want to make sure you're giving what you say that you're offering in these videos uh, and give some valuable information, whatever it is. Even if it's a gaming video, make sure you're telling the truth in your title. You just have to learn how to get creative with the wording of your titles and your thumbnails. That, like your thumbnails, I'm telling you guys, one of the most important things when posting videos. Your thumbnails are like, think of it like a newspaper. Right? Think of your thumbnail as like the headline of a newspaper. So like if you see a newspaper with a crazy headline, you're going to stop and be like, whoa, and, and like read a little bit about it, if not the whole story. Same idea with thumbnails. You want to make your thumbnails super, super clickable. Give enough information so that people are interested in watching the video and want to click on it. But don't give them everything in the thumbnail, right? I'm not putting any text in this thumbnail whatsoever. I just want it to be a nice clean picture because when people are scrolling and they see this, you know, the blues and the reds match my room kind of. They're a little bit different shade, but my themes are like blue and red in the background with all my lights. So when people see this sphere, like it's going to pop out and, and it's going to make them want to click on the video. Uh, now what we're going to do is a small example. I have this set up right here to make another thumbnail, just a basic image. Um, and let's say you're playing a game, right? And you're, you're doing a gaming video and you're like, this weapon is extremely overpowered. Like they just added a weapon in a patch. So what we're going to do is I just found like a vector image of a sword. I'm going to bring that in into Photoshop right here. We're going to remove the background really quick, right? Let's get rid of the background. So now we have this giant sword. We're going to make it really big because on our thumbnails, you got to remember some people are scrolling on their phone and these thumbnails are very tiny. So you want things to be big and pop off the screen. So we have our sword, boom, right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color overlay and basically make this thing a silhouette, black it out. Bam. We blacked it out. You can kind of tell it's a sword because there's a handle here, but there's like all this fire going on now. We don't know what's happening. We want to add maybe an outer glow to it, not a black one. We're going to do a white glow so it pops off the background a little bit more. We're going to go like that, make it nice and big, just like that. And then maybe for our text, what are we going to write? Let's write, um, let's do some Burbank font. Let's write like... This weapon is extremely overpowered, right? Make that text nice and big, even tilt it a little bit, put it like next to the next to the weapon here. We're going to add some of our, I have like custom created gradients. We'll do that one. Got a nice black stroke behind it like that. We can even put it down towards the bottom. Well, now, you know what? It looks good at the top like that. Put a little bit maybe over it or behind it. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit behind it looks good like that. So it adds some depth to it. And then to top it off, something like this that's just a plain silhouette. Let's do like a question mark. Add those same exact things to it. The stroke and the gradient. And let's make it nice and big. And put it above the sword. And we'll do like this down in the corner. Boom. Maybe do two of them. Have another one like right here. Maybe a little bit smaller. And then one more up here maybe. Like that. Even smaller. 
boom something like that so what's going on here is and you could obviously add more if you're if you like to put like a picture of yourself i always have myself on my thumbnails it's my brand um but what we're doing here is like this is a video about hey guys this weapon is extremely overpowered we're letting you know that right here we can even make this way bigger if you don't have any other images to add here crank it way up this weapon is extremely overpowered what's the weapon it's right here but we don't know you got to click the video to watch uh i hope that that makes some sense to you guys it, it, it's it seems like an easy concept but you'd be very surprised at how many people don't actually do this it's wild actually um if you try this out i want to know how you guys do so, so drop some comments down below and let me know uh if this did help you because i hope it did if you guys did enjoy this video uh, definitely hit that like button. It helps me out a lot and share it with anyone else who creates videos uh, and subscribe to the channel Turn on those post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video And if you want to hang out with me on twitch, I stream on there at twitch.tv slash hammerdance You can go on over there and drop me a follow. But anyways guys, that's all from me I hope you enjoyed this video. I want you to keep those hammers up And I'll see you next time <laughs>